Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Very pleased to continue this journey with you to talk. We have been discussed a bit about Web3, NFTs, blockchain, and the way those technologies can help to support uh, the preservation of the artisan uh, skills and know-how. We are going to continue in a bit, um, let's say, to continue to talk about, you know, the metaverse and the Web3 uh, in a bit uh, different way because, you know, for most of the people, metaverse and Web3 is just, you know, for geek, it's for young generation, and, but people usually don't understand the fact that those technology will also support the sustainability transformation of the fashion and luxury industry. So to talk about this very important topic, I'm very pleased to welcome on stage Stephanie Hirschmiller, who is a fashion consultant, an amazing journalist working for a lot of uh, international media. And she's, I'm sorry to say, but one of the rare journalists knowing you know, a lot about fashion and luxury, but also a lot about Web3. Please, welcome. To join this panel, um, I also would like to invite on stage, you know, let's bring a bit of uh, young spirit, innovation, and, uh, and great energy. Let me invite on stage Jean Nicolas Inar, co founder of Wagmi Studio. To complete this panel with the same energy, with a great vision and amazing technology and solution, I invite on stage Julian Keller, co-founder of Society. <laughs> and I'm going to do something which is totally unusual, but I will do it <laughs> because I like to be different. I'm going to auto-introduce because I will be part of this panel. So I'm Stephanie Bretonnier, I'm the CEO of Power3.io, and indeed, I'm helping brands working with investors and startups to connect the dots between people, business, tech, and sustainability. Okay, thank you, Stephanie, for the great introduction. Um, so, look, during this conference, we've already heard a lot about transparency and traceability and digital passports. We've heard about, about counterfeiting. I think we've heard from Origin. Stephanie, a I stop you because oh. I was so into, I totally forgot to welcome, <laughs> okay. you know, Stefano, who is uh, remotely connected. I was I'm so sorry, that, Stefano. I we had a <laughs> you know, um, no, please no let problem. me introduce I'm Stefano. I, I'm sorry, I haven't he hear you. Can you repeat, Stefano? Don't worry, it's all good. We are far <laughs> from Dubai here, you know. You know. Well, I spent too much time with you, you know, last time I was, so that might be the reason why. No, I'm so sorry. Let me introduce you uh, to uh, Stefano. Uh, Stefano uh, Galassi is the founder of Limitless Innovation, an amazing uh, gentleman working in the industry, specifically fashion industry, for the last let's say two decades, having a tremendous uh, expertise in terms of open innovation. And we are part together of uh, the mentor program of Farfetch and also uh, belonging to the Metaverse Fashion Council. So welcome with us, Stefano. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you, Steph. Awesome. So let's, re let's restart this. <laughs> and um, yeah, so as I was saying, we've had loads of stuff um, during this conference about traceability, about transparency, about digital passports, um, you know, and, and also about um, the issues that um, resale has got with counterfeiting. And I think we've just also heard about um, preserving artisanal skills just in the talk um, earlier. So here's the thing. Web3 technology can, it can address all these issues and it can do a lot more. And because of this, it can really be leveraged to, to galvanize the circular economy and to help us live more sustainably. So, um, I would, I, um, Stephanie's just done um, a you know, brief in intro of everyone um, and she's introed herself. 
But I'd really like, before we get going, I'd really like everyone just to tell me, you know, their elevator pitch in a nutshell, just a little bit more about what their companies do. Because I feel like, you know, Web3 is kind of a new horizon for a lot of people. And so in order for these guys to talk and give their opinions on, on things, I want you guys to, you know, understand a bit more about where they're coming from and what they do. So really, really short. Do you want to start? I think I do. Yeah, you've, no, you've, you've done yours already. So yeah. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Society, so we are like a, the first exponential driven uh, metaverse. So basically we are doing um, high-end customer experience, um, digital and virtual experiences. For instance, uh, uh, storytelling of a product um, with a highest quality, design quality technically possible today. Uh, and we are like enhance um, customer success, customer experience through branded virtual experiences. Uh, hi everyone, I'm uh, Jean-Nicolas Hénard from uh, Paris, France. I'm the happy co-founder of Wagme Studio. Uh, it's a tech web free agency and we basically help uh, big companies, big corporations, some of them are in luxury but not, not only in luxury, to move into the web free, to, to draft and design a great roadmap, a great strategy for the next three years, five years, ten years. Um, still in the, the experimentation phase for most of them, but uh, yeah, they're really willing to move into the ecosystem, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, we do uh, smart contract development as well. Awesome. And Stefano. Hello, uh, this is Stefano from Dubai. I um, come from, uh, originally from Milan. Been working in fashion luxury since 20 years. So basically, my role is to connect uh, luxury brands like Armani, Zinia, Gucci, Valentino, Bulgari, all of them with the best, most important technology, including Metaverse. So we're trying to help to them to educate, to design the new strategy to implement. And Metaverse is actually, as Stephanie mentioned before, not just a way to authentic technology, but specifically, it's a new way to actually generate value also in the value chain. But we're going to discuss more of this in a while. We are. Thank you. So look, to make this easier to digest, we're going to divide it up into around four areas. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is transparency, traceability, and authentication. Then we are going to talk about digital fashion, avatars, and NFTs in that respect. Then afterwards, we're going to talk about edutainment, which is, as you probably know, is a mixture of um, education and entertainment new word. Um, and then finally, we're going to talk about the incentivization of resale for businesses, because it's important for businesses to make money at the end of the day. So look, so let's start off talking about traceability and transparency. And I'm going to throw up open this question to everyone. How can Web3 technologies help the consumer make more informed choices? Plus, where counterfeiting is concerned, um, how, can, how can it help to combat this and which will in turn obviously inspire consumer confidence and further drive the circular economy? Who would, I think Stephanie would like to kick off, I know that. Yeah, for sure. Um, but first of all, before answering your question, Stephanie, I just would like to raise something that is, for me, really important. Usually when you talk to uh, tech guys, um, it's always about um, geeky jargon, you know, we, we say, oh, this is so cool and, you know, this tech and this layer in the blockchain. But at the end, as I always say, you know, m I mean, billions of people are using Internet every single day and they have no clue how it works. So we don't care about really the tech by itself. Uh, we care about the use cases. So when we talk about Web3, what is it? So to make it super simple. Web 1, you could read, okay? You could only read. Web 2, you could read and write, okay? But Web 3, you read, you write, and you own. So thanks to Web 3, you are going to prove not only the authenticity, not only, you know, have a full value chain, you know, highlighting uh, the... the um, all the information related to trustability, 
But on top of that, you are going to be able to prove that you are the owner of uh, these items. So that is a major shift. And the, the, the benefits of this technology is the fact that this will stop, you know, greenwashing, tech washing, and we were talking just before about craft washing. Because there is a moment where everything, every single information will be encrypted into you know, a blockchain, which is actually um, a secure environment where you can't you know, manipulate the data. So it's, it's a major improvement on the way we can build trust between the brands and between uh, the end consumer. And we will not only bring a lot of traceability after the sale, meaning that we are in an environment where we talk a lot about circular economy. So I'm giving you a very concrete um, and pragmatic example. When you buy a car, you want to see you know, the, 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 the record book where you know what, what has been done in terms of maintenance in your car, just to make sure that uh, there were no major accidents that, you know, and, and you will buy a car that will be, uh, uh, will, will hand at the garage uh, in a couple of, uh, of weeks. So you want to have all the track record of what happened on, on this car. It is exactly the same for a watch. It is exactly uh, the same for a couple of uh, luxury, uh, luxury uh, products. I'm, I'm talking to uh, yacht companies, to jet companies, and the, Economy, the circular economy is reaching all the different segments of the industry. But not to make, a, um, to, to make it too long, this trustability is also you know, important on the pre-sale side. You want to know, because we are really fed up with everything linked to greenwashing, you want to know, you know the sourcing material information, you want to know who did it, we were talking about the artisan. So, this NFT is just a secure document. You can't manipulate, you can't change the data, and it's just the only way as the end consumer to make sure of what you, you are planning to buy. Uh, you don't want to, to buy a watch or a product that has been stolen. So the only way to get that level of security and bring a lot of trust and transparency, we, every time we talk about, and this is all about Web3, is the three T, transparency, trustability, equal trust. And I should say, transparency, trustability, trust, equal impact. So yeah, very much so. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, just to I mean, just to recap, what you're, what, you're, what you're saying is that you take, basically, an, an NFT can be just, it can be just a, a virtual receipt for a physical product. And just to recap, as you, as you, as you said, in built into that receipt can be actions that the product experienced during its life, like whether it's been serviced or whatever, and then also, you know, whether parts, whether it's recyclable, whether it's where its component parts come from, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, this is all the information that you that you'd find like in a tag on the back of my, on the back of my jacket, but you find it online, and it's embedded in, in the blockchain. So that, you know, that's, re that's great for consumer confidence. Exactly. Yeah. Just to add one thing, you mentioned about counterfeiting. I mean, we've seen specifically right after, I mean, I mean due to the COVID, uh, the booming of the e-commerce industry. So uh, the, the psychological buyers, I'm sorry, psychological buyers about, you know, um, purchasing a luxury good, uh, upon uh, 10,000 uh, euros, you know, just broke because th this was the only way to purchase a luxury good during uh, the, the COVID uh, the pandemic. So the counterfeiter took advantage of this, um, this evolution. And that's the reason why Reina, through social media, specifically TikTok, for example, because it's from China and it's a great platform for them to spread their counterfeit product. There, there are, I mean, this issue of counterfeiting reach right now, I don't know if you are aware, but even inside the boutiques, meaning that the, the quality of the counterfeit product reach a, po a point that it's even difficult for customer services within, uh, you know, uh, luxury and, uh, and fashion brands to recognize, identify counterfeit product from real product. And we have seen, I won't mention the brands, but we have seen cases from 
um, counterfeit uh, product being on the shelves of a boutique of fashion brands. There were some swapping and people were not able to identify, you know, uh, if it was a real or, or a counterfeit product. So having on top of a product, bringing and delivering to your end consumer an NFT, which is a doc a virtual document encrypted on the blockchain that prove the authenticity and the origin is critical. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. No, for sure. Okay. And we, no. Okay. We, can, we can also maybe take the example of uh, Vinted. If you like buy a stuff uh, like a digital, uh, not digital, a garment uh, on Vinted, you nowadays you don't uh, know uh, where where it's come from. So uh, there is a lot of counterfeiting and like there is like maybe, maybe many billions of dollars like, uh, of transaction due to, 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 to counterfeit. So with the NFT, with these documents that is re written on the blockchain, like a, a white book, you can't um, be fooled anymore. So it's like a, a really uh, a great pain that is addressed through this technology of blockchain. Yeah, and exactly. And the more the more the, re the bigger the, the bigger the resale industry gets. I mean, I think it's trebled in the last two or three years. The more of an issue you're going to have with counterfeiting. So to be encrypted on the blockchain, yeah, absolutely, it's really important. And just something else that we we've, we've mentioned during this conference earlier, but um, haven't just now, is the new EU regulations that are being tabled about digital passports and about um, how. I th I, you know, I mean, a lot of things are being tabled. I think right now it's pertaining to apparel and wasn't me to apparel and things with batteries in, like could be watches, for example. But the blockchain will enable these this, all this information to be encrypted, so this can actually comply. Use going in this direction can really comply with that legislation as well. So. If, it's a, it's a winning situation. Yeah, can I uh, just talk about the technical part? <laughs> I, know, I know you said it wasn't that much important, but I agree with all what's been said, and, and this is really interesting to, to see how the use cases are being developed right now. But um, I think it, I mean, it's, we still need to take care about the technical side because this is exactly why we got the Web2 and why we got the, the, the data stolen by these huge companies. And the same for money. We had, uh, this is why we need to take care about how money works. You know, if we don't educate ourselves at least at minimum, I'm not saying we're all going to be engineer in the technical side or developers, but I think, at, yeah, to, to understand at least how it works. And I think also that it should come from people to ask for blockchain. I know it's not something that we're used to say on, in the industry, but um, for most of the brands, I personally, for now, from the technical side, I personally don't see the real profound added value of using NFTs for all their, their goods. I know I can hear the, 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 the pitch about the secondary market and everything, but technically with the Web2 it was possible before. It's, it wasn't implemented for some reasons, I don't know why, I'm not uh, in the business uh, side, but technically, it was possible to, to resell a product that were auto, um, auto, um, authenticate. Um, but NFT helps to make the, the, the transaction f uh, more freed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we need, we, I, th I think we still need to care about that. And because this is basically asking brands more transparency. And I don't think that brands naturally are going to open their data, give their data back to the users. And so. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's still a debate in the ecosystem, so I don't know how is it, this is going to evolve, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, agreed, it's not natural for brands, but then again, if there's legislation that's, and he's got a question, if there's legislation that's coming in, then, you know, they might have to do it. So, but, re but really good point, really good point. Um, Stefano's wa raising his little I mean, hand. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like to consider that uh, NFT is, is only the very the iceberg of the metaverse. And when we discuss with luxury brands, in reality, we try to identify everything around the virtualization, the digitalization, the entire process. So this means from design, sourcing, traceability, production, cutwork, retail, commerce. If you think about a broader view, NFT is really just 
the, ice, the tip of the iceberg in which, of course, there is a lot of buzz. But when we go discuss about rents, we discuss about industrial application, in which you can actually use technology to improve efficiency in the current process, in which you can actually have a business case, you can actually virtualize your product, you can reduce the, com the number of samples you produce. These are numbers that today are possible thanks to the level of technology which arrived, we arrived. I remember like 15 years ago when we were discussing about the story of the future for Gucci, certain, and then also the entering Second Life. You know, I remember six, 70 years, 16 years ago, and uh, I was happy then to do the so. And we were still wrong because the community was not ready yet, the technology was not ready yet to, uh, to give power to all the community around you. Also, the speed of the connection was not ready yet. But nowadays, thanks to the visualization, using platforms like Unreal Technology, they give you the sense of beauty. Don't forget about fashion, it's about culture, it's about beauty. So now having the chance of a powerful machine that can show the product, beauty as it's real, sometimes even more, is actually changed completely how the different departments can work. The photo shooting, the commerce, uh, the designer. This, I think, is the real power of the metaverse virtualization fashion, not just the 5% of the NFTs that in this moment is quite popular. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And in fact, this is, you know, this is what um, the next area that I want to talk about is all about. So you've really preempted it. So thank you. Um, I want us to discuss um, about how digital fashion and avatars and NFTs can, can really have a positive impact for sustainability and the circular economy. Now, Jean-Nicola, that was something that I knew that you really wanted to talk about. So what do you think? Yeah, well, I, you know, I look at the young generation and I think I'm still part of them. <laughs> I'm 26, so I think I'm still young. And, uh, Baby. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I, I, I recently uh, read a study, uh, a sort of survey that says that younger generation uh, take care, uh, gives more importance to their uh, online and digital status than their in real life status, you know. So, of course, we can still buy luxury watches or, I don't know, jewelry and, and stuff. But I really see the NFT as somehow like tangible um, digital products. And that is one of the added value of the NFT. And that's why we're going to have like really owning the NFTs and the digital products in metaverses. And it, it looks a little, a little bit um, like crazy when I say that, but yeah, I think for the younger generation, it's going to be more important to have a, a digital watch or a digital, I don't know, uh, clothes or some goods like digital goods as an NFT uh, to put them in the metaverse. And so um, if you look, if you compare the NFT and the real product, when I have a watch or, or some luxury goods, I cannot really like connect to the community. I mean, of course, I own it, and there are probably parties and you know uh, events uh, for Rolex or for other companies. But we've, what we've seen recently with the NFTs is that it was really based on the community. And luxury is about uh, luxury; it's also about community. So, yeah, I think this this is a it's, it's an incredible opportunity for a younger generation who really wants to build the next uh, brands, jewelry brands or luxury brands in the metaverse. It's a totally new opportunity and uh, it's going to be crazy over the next uh, years. Yeah, I mean, totally. And also, um, also from a, from, a sustain, you know, from a sustainability oh, yeah. point, point, point of view, I think, you, I think something else that you mentioned to me earlier, um, you were saying that perhaps digital virtual products could be a really good way of testing people's responses. So that's going to be more sustainable than actually having to make them and realize that maybe people don't like them so much or maybe they don't work. You know, it would involve, it would allow brands to do some tests virtually before actually bringing something to market. Completely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we, we are lucky in Wagmi Studio, we, we are able to work with these uh, uh, big corp uh, companies, luxury brands also in sport, in a lot of different uh, vertical. And uh, this is really at the moment where we are just experimenting, trying to see uh, internally, not, not only publicly, but also internally, um, what we can, how we can uh, create new brands 
and, uh, and, and make them grow. And, and, and the, the point that they're seeing, and I think most of them are in, in the process of really understanding that, um, is going to be less polluting because somehow you don't have, to, you don't have the, all the, the, the process of building the actual real products because it's fully digital. And it's also for luxury brands a new way to be like to have unlimited uh, creativity because you, get, you suddenly get rid of the physical law of a product. So if you if you're manufacturing a real product, you will have you know to take care about the weight, the balance, the uh, the, the material, and everything, uh, how the transportation and everything. But suddenly. In a digital world, um, and I think you, you, can wit yeah. you, you can witness that on, on your metaverse, suddenly you don't have that. You can really create your own stuff and not taking care of the, you know, the, the real material to see if it's, if it's polluting or if it's not. So I think it's going to, to be a... It's, it's a I mean, digital worlds are, 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 at the end, a good news for sustainability, environment, and, and everything. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> I would yes. like to uh, add a few things. I mean... Discussing with older generation, um, most of them believe that, you know, metaverse will be only for, you know, Gen Z, Alpha, and that's it. I just would like to raise a few points to jump on the, this conversation regarding the impact of Web3 and metaverse. And if it's true, I mean, NFT is just a small part, it's just one component of something bigger. But when you look at... Uh, the reality, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to emphasize the fashion industry right now because it is the second most polluting industry in the yeah. world. Um, one simple figure, 68% of um, the clothing produced every single year and in a garbage in less than one year. So bringing metaverse is not only, you know, the hype thing and so on. It will definitely help to reduce the carbon footprint of uh, the industry simply because we can switch and proceed to a big transformation in terms of business model. I'm giving you a very basic example. Imagine that we, you know, even if um, we for sure, I mean, metaverse will be a key part of uh, the omni-channel you are going to offer to your uh, end consumer. But what is important to emphasize is the fact that uh, these technologies will help to create on-demand production instead of, you know, guessing the forecast of, oh, this, uh, uh, this dress, this shirt, this whatever, uh, I, should, uh, I should produce this number of quantity, but you have no clue because it's not based on the demand. So you produce and you have a huge level of stock, so it's also, uh, financially speaking, um, a high cost for your company. When you can leverage and, and, and test your market by offering and showing digital fashion, so that's one use case. But on top of that, you know, as a humor, as a end consumer, we are dealing with, you know, even if I'm a woman, I don't like personally to go shopping, you know. It's not something very nice. I prefer to go online, you know. I'm in the uh, Web2 uh, for the last two decades, so I'm more on e-commerce. But, you know, it's, you know, ordering and then receiving the package and then, you know, sometimes it doesn't fit to me where I can have a much better experience having my avatar looking like me and you have this kind of outfit where it will adapt the avatar because we know we take some weight, we lose some weight. So we have this connection between the real world and the virtual world and you give another type of experience to your end consumer. And I'm... I mean, it's quite interesting because when I launched uh, and I started to work, uh, I was part of LVMH, I was part of Richmond Group, and um, I support, you know, this, uh, this group, these brands to um, embrace the digital transformation 12 to 15 years ago. And it was all the same. Oh, my God, you know, social media, we are not going to live anymore uh, having direct contact with people. We are all spending too much time, you know being connecting digitally and we face the same comments right now with metaverse it won't replace anything it will just add another layer and we won't live you know full day full time in the metaverse we will create some bridge and the nft is one of the bridge we will leverage to offer another type of experience to your end consumer and make sure that you can solve the friction we are dealing with for decades so it's a tremendous opportunity but there is one rule 
you know, the digital transformation started 20, uh, no, 15, 10 years ago. And even right now, some brands are not yet uh, ready. They have not finalized this process. But let me tell you, the Web3 is not going to be a transformation. It's going to be a revolution. So you better have to start now. Start small, but start now. Because the impact on the industry is going to be tremendous for one simple reason the power will be taken by the end consumer and not anymore by the brand. So, just to jump on what you just said, Nicola, community is absolutely key. You have, to, you have great audience on your social media, newsletter, and so on. Transform this audience into a community and then from a community to an advocacy. And let me tell you, the impact on your brand will be tremendous. So just picking up on something you said, you men mentioned sizing and virtual fit solutions. And I think that was something that Julian was really keen to have an input in as well. Because just to sort of give you a bit of background, in terms of apparel that's returned when people buy stuff online, it's around 30 or 40% of returns. So, Julian, please, yeah, please pick this, this up. This number is like tremendous. Like 30% of uh, products are like... Uh, uh, just returning to, to, to the brands and it's like a pain for the consumer, it's a pain for the brand, it's the pain for the environment and blockchain and, uh, and the digital avatar can like solve all of this because uh, you know when you're like a consumer want to like um, feel the product, know the, how, know the exp how to experience this garment for instance, uh, with the e-commerce uh, you, you don't just have the experience you have when you when you go to a physical shop, so you just like order like a lot of products in a lot of size, and you, um, for instance, in in Zara is the typical uh, typical uh, way to do it, and we, you will like just return to 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 the brands the the the, the garments that did not fit you, but uh, there is also the fact that the the fact that uh, nowadays is not only with all the generation Z, the, the Gen Z, the, the, the race of social media, is not about like just extra small, small, uh, medium and large, it's all about like outfits, uh, how it um, uh, fits you well, not, so it's more about fitting uh, in, instead of sizing. So you, you want to like uh, know how, how, how you want to, you, to, to look like with, uh, in a certain um, situation, in an event, and not just uh, if, uh, it's, if it's uh, great, great in, your, in your shape. So uh, it's for that like the digital avatar is like really important nowadays to like uh, really have your, your in terms of uh, fitting, in terms of digital uh, customer experience, like it's really, really important. So yeah, what, what Julian's talking about in particular is um, av avatars, um, you can have virtual fit solutions where say a consumer is going to put in some, me some of their own measurements and then that can be combined with artificial intelligence and machine learning to have a really good picture of um, their actual body, and then they can try different sizes of outfits on it to actually work out what their real size is. I mean, there's a company called Bods who is doing, and um, you know, who's done some really, really great work on this. So it could, you know, it can it can be beneficial for the environment, and also, and it can save brands money because it can cut down, you know, maybe it can half the amount of returns there are. So that's another sort of really good. Use, it's, a really, it's, a, it's a really good use case of um, Web3 technology that we can sort of see the benefits for the, cir for the circular economy. Stefano. I mean, uh, once again, I think uh, there is some certain scenarios that are more st are stronger when you use technology inside the process. Think about the process of design, you know. The circularity needs to be in the head of the designer itself. But you need to help with the technology to know what's going to be the final ending impact of that material that kind of, for the kind of collection, right? So if you can mix up tools that are able to identify what's the impact on the final part of the value chain, you can also use in technology like artificial intelligence design or also digital twin, avoid to produce certain product. 
So the business case is positive for the for the company because you reduce the number uh, the expenses for producing the sample. That by the way, producing sample is the most expensive thing that a luxury brand has it because every single is a a single item is a u unique piece. So if you can avoid to produce 300 pieces and you can only produce 10, and then you have 290 SKU totally digital of multiple feet, multiple color. And you can also run virtually uh, a catwalk. And you can also run virtually a fit on a virtual avatar. You will be having a tremendous impact on the way actually the entire process is being designed, and also from design to the final consumer, reducing consistently what is actually the 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 extra materials and the extra energy used during the process. And this means better business, most profitable, but also better impact on planets. That's really true. And it's really good to look at it from the business side of things as well, as, 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 well, as well as the consumer point of view. Because yes, great for the consumer that um, they can have virtual fit solutions and use artificial intelligence not to get the wrong size, but bigger picture with brands. So, yeah, you're absolutely bang on the money. Um, yes. Can I just... If yes, you can. Time, I don't know. Oh, maybe you want to go to the next subject. No, um, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I just want to get back to what has, has been said, because this is really funny. I think that in the future we will... I'm not sure that people, uh, some of them, but not all the people, want to have their own personality in the digital world. Um, you know, I mean, when I see an avatar like Clonex or even Bored Apes, and I met... Uh, a lot of board apes owner, they want to like improve their avatar, their their board apes. So it's a, it's a photo. You, I don't know if you know board apes. You know it's like the apes, uh, the, the the PFP collection of as an NFT, and uh, they want to really like customize their board apes. They just they don't want to move their themselves into the digital world because, you know, I think that for, for philosophical reason and also in terms of. Uh, of uh, visualization, you don't want to be yourself in the digital world. And uh, it's the same for Instagram. We don't show ourselves in, on Instagram. I mean, we, we, we physically look the same uh, in, in real life, but we use filter, we use a lot of things. And we have also a, different, uh, a lot of different clues, uh, for example, that, uh, that makes me say, make me say that we're, going, we're not going to be ourselves in the metaverse, because when you look at uh, Apple, you know, they have this uh, animoji, called an animoji, and you can, like, face detection, and you transform your expression of the face yeah. into pretty much whatever you want, even, even a poop um, animoji. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, why not? And you can send some messages uh, using that technology. I'm not doing it, but uh, <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I suppose. So, yeah, so that's the thing, and, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure that we're going to see our really, like, our self in the, in the metaverse in the future. But that brings, that brings us on to a really good final point that we might be able to talk about before we have to finish, or can we? <laughs> um, yeah, so I just really wanted to talk about edutainment. And I wanted to talk about how Gen Z, they are the consumers of the future. And they are also the biggest users of gaming platforms, um, which are a mate which are in themselves a major point of entry into the metaverse. So I'd really like to talk about how, and um, you picked it up just earlier when you, when you mentioned changing NFTs, etc. But um, I'd just like to talk about how brands can channel these gamified experiences to kind of preserve and to future-proof um, their heritage and archive by making, by making this relevant to um, the new consumer. And one, I mean, one, one, really good one really good example that I've got is what Gucci are doing with Gucci Vault. And for example, um, one of the thing, one of the, it's, it's on a platform called the Sandbox, which is basically a gaming platform. And one of the things that you can do on that is one of the tasks you have to do is restoring uh, archive vintage handbag. So that's kind of using the metaverse to teach people a about sustainability and the circular economy and to bring that to the fore, but b also to look at, to, you know, invite people to rethink about the brand's, heri the brand's heritage as well and see, where they, and see where they came from. So 
has anyone else got any input on um, how brands can future-proof their archives? Yeah, Stefano and... Uh, Stefano, t tell me about it. You're in Italy, I know. Actually, well, no, you're not in Dubai, but you're Italian, so you're in Gucci country. Otherwise, I jump on this one. Because okay. Have, uh, is, it, is it working? Awesome. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, what Gucci is doing in Vault is the great way to actually represent a luxury brand heritage from the past to the today world, you know? Yeah, exactly. And this is basically providing also service on top of product, but also service on top of space. In the metaverse, we have mainly have three main P, product, places, people. And Gucci, with Gucci Garden and Gucci Vault, is basically experimenting with 3D access in the same time, on top adding services, exclusive service for the community. So it's really one of the best cases to look at as for luxury brand. Of course, Gucci is a lucky position to potentially keeping innovating since ever. They, their DNA of the brand is constantly innovate. So it means uh, even if the luxury brand, they are taking the innovation as part of their DNA. So even if sometimes they get, they take big risk, sometimes to innovate and need to take big risk, they actually, uh, it's fine for them because the community is actually following them, supporting them. And then what is actually doing in Gucci Vault, combining products, people and places, plus providing services for the community, I think is actually the best case out there in the market currently. So, great example. I can't agree more with, uh, with, with Stefano. And I'm working with a couple of uh, luxury uh, brands and luxury cars. Um, they have lost the connection with uh, the owners, with uh, you know, their, uh, their patrimony. And um, thanks to you know, this technology, thanks to the fact that we were talking about uh, uh, to communities, but it's, you have a lot of collectors, you have a lot of groups that has, you know, the um, aficionados of brands that are, you know, you can find them very easily. Uh, uh, and they started, you know, with the social media uh, 10, 12 years ago. Um, and they are totally disconnected from, uh, you know, those yeah. people. And they find out that by spending a bit of time, you know, by gathering all this community, by uh, implementing, you know, this kind of uh, technology, we were talking about NFTs, but also leveraging the metaverse to emphasize their heritage towards their clients on a global scale. It's a tremendous way to nurture, to reinforce um, the relationship between, you know, the brand and uh, the uh, end consumer. And when you build a community, you have to provide added value. So you need to emphasize, you know, your DNA, your, 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 your heritage, and being, you know, um, able to unveil, you know, some beauties of your patrimony is absolutely, uh, it's absolutely critical. I just would like, because we're running out of time, but just to, um, to share one thing, uh, one figure which is absolutely critical, because what I hear sometimes is the fact that, yeah, but you know, we don't have the budget and so on. I invite you to just look at what you spend in uh, digital marketing and the ROI of your campaign, you know, when you can leverage people that are really committed to your brand, if you transform them at the real aficionados, instead of having huge um, audience on uh, social media and you have no clue who are behind, you have no direct connection, just make sure that you um, extract, you find a way uh, to, uh, uh, to get in touch with, uh, with those people and, um, and, and build a real relationship uh, with them simply because you have to, to know that 45% of um, the turnover will be made by Gen Z and millennials by 2025. And if we look at the, the potential uh, market of, I'm sorry, I'm struggling with my phone. Here we go. Uh, the potential um, uh, turnover market of the metaverse and, and Web3 in uh, 2030, it's uh, uh, about $50 billion by 2030. So it's another market. It's on top of your physical product. You are going to be able to offer digital. And I just read uh, yesterday uh, an article which was very interested, uh, specifically towards younger generation. They want to um, 
uh, have the outfits from their favorite brands on their avatars. So you have a tremendous opportunity to not only you know, continue to do your, your business, but on top of that, leverage and develop new revenue stream. So yes, for sure, you have to spend a bit of money, but again, you can learn a lot by doing and making the first step. And by learning by doing, starting now, let me tell you, the ticket for the entry into the Web3 will be much more affordable now than in two or three years' time. Very, very well said. Um, I think we probably need to wrap this up now. Am I right? Or do we have time for something else? No. no, okay. Right, well, look, thank you, everyone, for coming and being part of this. Thank you to the panel. Um, and I just really hope that we've met to, you know, to Web3 or Metaverse ver versions or whatever, or people who know a little bit about it. Um, I hope that we've managed to explain how NFTs are sort of a lot more than just a commodity that you can buy or sell, and they've actually got real live use cases, as well as just looking pretty and are something to be flipped. But anyway, thank you, everyone. I just would like, I will put my hat off Master of Ceremony again. Um, we have time to take maybe one or two questions, but just one thing because um, I just would like to uh, thank uh, this, uh, all these great panelists. I invite you to, uh, to see the amazing work that Julian is, is doing uh, with uh, society. He's building a metaverse. I mean, I've been really impressed by the renderings because, you know, in the luxury and fashion industry, we're very keen of, you know, having the right rendering when it comes to specifically, you know, watches and jewelry. And what they are doing is just tremendously, you know, fine tunes, the renderings, the experience is just amazing. So I invite you to follow them because they are doing a tremendous job. I mean, we do a lot together uh, with the Wagmi Studio because they are super smart. They are working already. I mean, Jean-Nicolas is 26, his co-founder is, you know, the same age, but they are so smart and they already work with major brands. So, I mean, just follow them because they are doing great. Stefano is just an amazing, an amazing, an amazing uh, professional working in, uh, uh, in the industry for decades. He has a true understanding of uh, uh, the industry, but as well uh, is really connected to startups and, uh, and work in the open innovation for years. So working as well with investors. So, I mean, just follow these guys on LinkedIn, on their platform, because they are doing great. And Stephanie, if you are looking for a great uh, uh, journalist, editor, whatsoever, she's your guy. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, if you, we ha only Thank have you, one Thank you. question. Supposed to, uh, to put up a time. Yeah, well. Um, I'd have a question to Jean-Nicolas, um, because I, I thought it was very interesting that you said you couldn't do market testing in this Web3 environment. Do you have any numbers of how big the correlation is between the choices people would make in the metaverse and choices they, that they would do in the real life? Yeah. Because it's known that people are more risk prone in a virtual world. Yeah. We, we don't have, unfortunately, that uh, this kind of statistics because, uh, and even if we do, it wouldn't, uh, from my point of view, it wouldn't mean anything because most of the people that are like testing NFTs and metaverses, they're speculative, specu specu speculation, speculation uh, guys. So it's not the same behavior that you have, you know, online rather than in the real life. So, uh, no, I mean, from my side, I don't have that kind of, of things. All right, thank you. Welcome. Hi, that's a question maybe for everyone. Uh, I was wondering if, for example, if we are a brand, uh, actually it exists, it exists approximately like 200 metaverses, how do we do to choose the right one and how we do to, to enter in the web tree actually, if we don't know how it works? Yeah, so now maybe there is like uh, 50 to 100 metaverses as you are talking right now, but uh, each metaverse is like, uh, I think will be used in a certain type of um, 
of experience of event. And so most of them, like Sandbox and Tranon, is most they are mostly used in a, in a gaming. Uh, while uh, a lot of uh, others are most, uh, mostly used in luxury, sports, music, uh, art. So they will have a lot of um, area where uh, Metaverse will... I think there will be a winner-take-all in all those areas, but um, uh, there will be like more than one Metaverse because there is too many use cases as for NFTs uh, that can be addressed. So there will not be like one Metaverse, mostly like maybe 10 or 20 at the end, but uh, p uh, time, time will, will tell that, uh, which metaverse will you choose for your business. <laughs> maybe to complete also, uh, I, I read an interview of uh, the CEO of Animoca brand, uh, one of the most famous, uh, uh, I don't know, well, they're investing, they're doing a lot of things, marketing and everything. Uh, they're also working with Yuga Lab, uh, the metaverse of uh, the bald apes, other side. And he said that uh, we would probably in the future has, uh, have uh, as many metaverses as we have cities. So, you know, it's a totally different way to see it. It's still building. We're still, like, in the process of building. So, um, but to get back to your question, I, I think that your question is basically the same as if I say, um, let's say I'm a restaurant, I own a restaurant a franchise, and I want to expand. Which, to, to, to what country, which city I'm going to expand? So I can choose France, if I've started in France, and now we're going to Paris, I don't know, Lyon, Lille, whatever. Or I can try to go expand. And if I expand the company, I will have to study the different countries, the different laws, the different uh, culture and everything. It's going to be the same for metaverses. And this is why if I, if I had to start it again, I would go you know, for like, real estate uh, promoters or people who advise on the real estate uh, business they should go also to, and have a look at the metaverses because, yeah, it's going to, there's a need and there is a problem to solve here. Yeah. So, new jobs, new opportunity. <laughs> and I, I do have a, maybe a simple solution. Uh, for sure, Power 3 can help you, you know, to make the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you guys so much for... Uh, being with us this afternoon, it was also important to emphasize the fact that behind this technology, we must bring some purpose. Thank you very much. And we continue, uh, we have discussed a lot about Gen Z. We continue uh, this uh, great afternoon with uh, another um, a talk. It won't be a talk, it will be more a conference, actually, uh, with uh, uh, two young ladies coming from uh, the Ed School, and they will talk about, you know, why Gen Z are so keen, you know, to support brands that are really embracing sustainability. So please just have a short break and uh, come, uh, come back to see us. Thanks a lot. Thank you.